XPS is used for two purposes. The first one is it identifies the type of elements exist. So it means for elemental informations. And this kind of information can be obtained from survey spectra. The second use of XPS is a distinguishing chemical environment. That what is the environment of that element and we take help from high resolution spectra. In today's video, I will be talking about the chemical environment that how XPS helps to identify the chemical environment. Look, this is the standard XPS survey spectra for PET. This is the chemical formula for PET and we know that there are carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and we know that XPS cannot detect hydrogen. So the survey spectra give us the information about the elements. Carbon is there, oxygen is there. This is the photoelectron peaks, core electron peaks and this is the OJ peaks from oxygen. Now look at this formula. Carbon has different chemical environment. In one case, we have different type of elements. In another case, we have different type of elements. So this kind of information we can get from high resolution spectra. So we have to focus the most important uh, peak here from survey spectra and this is the carbon 1s. This is the carbon 1s peak from the survey spectra. And when we see so this peak is basically composed of three different peaks here. Why three different peaks? Because in each situation, carbon has different environment. Look at this E here. This, this E peak basically comes from this, this here. So this carbon has one type of environment. Look at this B peak here. So this B peak comes from this environment. Here the carbon has different type of environment. And similarly, look at this A here, another type of environment. So look at this range binding. And we just zoom here. We just resolve this particular uh, range here. The, 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 the area under the peak basically represents the number of carbon atoms here. Look at this one here. So they, they have a large number of carbon atoms. This is why the peak area is higher. This is how uh, XPS reveal about the chemical environment. Chemical environment talk about the neighboring elements. Very important. Like this is the carbon here. This is the neighboring atom is oxygen. Neighboring atom is nitrogen. So neighboring elements. Very important. The another important thing is the oxidation state here. This is talk about the electronegativity. So I will be only focus on these two things here. The neighboring elements in the oxidation state significantly change or affect the binding energy of the OJ electron peaks as well as the photoelectron peaks. For example, the binding energy of a carbon atom in this environment will be one value. And when we change the environment, the chemical environment, instead of uh, oxygen we introduce hydrogen or nitrogen or fluorine so the binding energy will change and this kind of information we get from XPS high resolution spectra look at this very interesting trend here this is one chemical state or you can call it chemical environment carbon is neighbor with carbon so one type of binding energy when we change the neighboring atom here this this is the neighboring atom replace with nitrogen with carbon so the binding energy change here. You see here the trend goes and, and when we replace oxygen with fluorine here, so the binding energy change here. This is why we say that XPS reveal about the chemical environment. So from this binding energy, this is the tool we have. When we see change in binding energy, for example, now I, I for example, if you give me this video here, binding energy, and later you give me this video, so I will, I will tell you that the, the environment is changing, but we we bringing more electronegative elements. So when we bring more electronegative elements, so it will take electron, and the the, the 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 host element will have more positive charge and will have greater binding energy for all electrons. Let's see the effect of oxidation state on the binding energy. We know that this is titanium, so it has a chemical state. This is titanium is basically bonded with titania. So one kind of environment. Then we introduce oxygen, here oxygen. So these are three different chemical states and we have three different oxidation states here. This is titanium 0, 2 and 4 here. So we can see that there is a variation in the binding energy because of the oxidation states. When we change the oxidation state, we change the binding energy. And this kind of information, because we have the same titanium and it shows different binding energy and 
we can only take care from high resolution X-ray spectra. We have to run high resolution X-ray spectra to see this kind of variation in the binding energy. With the help of survey spectra, it is not possible. 